Okay, let's go ahead and generate some random locations for our static meshes. I have a location vector, a rotation rotator, and a scale vector. The yellow ones are going to be vectors, and the purple one is a rotator. If I right click, I can select split struct pin, and that will allow me to access the x, y, and z data independently, which is going to be what I want to do because I want to actually keep z at zero or some constant value so they're all planar and then generate random values for x and y. I'm going to come over to the variable section and click this little plus sign here and we'll name this new one boundary and typically they're going to be a boolean by default so go ahead and compile that. You want to set the data type to a float, give it a compile and then when you do that it's going to give you the option to set a default value which I'm going to do We'll set it to a thousand. So now what I want to do is click this and drag it in. We'll select get boundary because we're trying to get the current value, not set it. And then I'm going to right click out here and type in random float in range. And this is going to return a float value between two ranges, right? So what I want to do is I want to take this and do a little multiply. I'm going to multiply you by negative one and pipe you into the minimum value. So this is the minimum will be negative 1,000 and the max will be positive 1,000. And we can just duplicate this. We wanna make sure that we're getting different values for our X and Y. And I'll just set this to like 500 so they're floating up a little bit, not intersecting too much with the ground plane there. Let's head over to our play space. And if I hit I got to select that little blueprint first. So now if I hit my add spheres button, I now have 100 spheres randomly generated between positive and negative 1000 and X and Y. I can hit it again and I'm going to get more and more and more and more. So these are actually static mesh actors. They are completely independent from the blueprint that created them. So if I want to clean them up, I can either manually go through select them all and delete them, or I can set up some logic here in the blueprint to keep track of them. So we're gonna do that. And there's a couple things that we can do, a couple different processes for, for doing that. I'm gonna go ahead and create a new custom event. I'm gonna call this one delete spheres. And our first technique is gonna to be to store the spheres as we create them. So I'm gonna create a new variable, call this existing spheres. And it is going to be data type static mesh actor. And we want an object reference. I'm going to need to store a bunch of spheres in here. So I need to set it to an array. An array is basically a list of things. There's our array. So now I have this existing spheres array. And as I am creating the static mesh actor, I'm going to select get existing spheres, pull off from the array tab and type in add. And then from our uh, return value, we'll go ahead and just add the existing sphere to our array as they are created. Once they're added, I can easily access them. Come over here and we're going to select get existing spheres again. And this time, instead of a for loop, I'm going to use a for each loop. For each loop is basically going to iterate over all the objects that are here in my array. The blue circle is the object itself. The green circle is the count that I'm on. So I'm going to pull off and you can see this is going to be an actor, static mesh actor object reference. And the reason it knows it's a static mesh actor is because these, this is an array of static mesh actors as defined right here. So because it's static mesh actor, I have access to all functionality associated with actors, including destroy actor. So I'm just going to come over here and pipe that in. I want to select my event and make this one visible in the editor as well. None of these have been stored. So unfortunately I've got to go through and get rid of these manually, but it's not too difficult. We'll go ahead and grab that blueprint again. 
So now you can see I've got my delete spheres button. So I'll add a few more rounds of spheres. And now when I click delete spheres, away they go. The next version of this that we can play with, let me go ahead and get rid of this logic, is to do a little matching here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull off from my delete spheres and I am going to get all actors of class and we'll select static mesh here. Static mesh actor. So this is going to be all of the actors that are uh, of static mesh class. We can do a for each here. And whereas up here we are setting the static mesh, we can also get the static mesh. So we're going to go ahead and get the static mesh component. And then off of that, we can get the static mesh. So I want to do a little comparison operation here. I'm going to pull off from here and I'm going to type in equal. So what I'm asking is, is this static mesh equal to the static mesh that we assigned here to our spawn static mesh actor. So I'm just going to go ahead and search for it in the content browser, and then I can pipe it in there. This red thing here is going to be a Boolean. So if I pull off that, I can type in branch. We'll connect loop body to branch. So if this is true, then I want to destroy the actor. This is only going to have an impact on the actors whose static mesh is the sphere that we added. We'll do a compile. When I compile, you can see these lines get a lot more solid. I'm going to double click just to kind of keep things clear. I'll add some nodes here, some little reroutes. So now we no longer have to store a reference to the actual actors that we're creating. So we'll just add a few spheres. And now when I click delete spheres, away they go, works again. So, all right, um, that is probably enough demonstration on adding spheres and, and making sure their locations are random. Uh, there's one more thing I can show you. If you notice, everything is spawning here at the origin as opposed to where the blueprint is. So we can pretty easily update that. And the time we have left, I'm gonna go ahead and right click over here and type in self. And you can see there's gonna be get a reference to self. In this case, self is going to be the actor. And because it is an actor, I can get the location. Get actor location. And this is going to be a vector. So I can split that. So here's our X and our Y. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull off from X and I'm going to type in add. And then try to pipe this in there. And then feed it in there, make up a little bit of space. Do the same thing on Y. So now we're taking into account the location of the actual blueprint itself. And you can see they are now spawning where the blueprint is. Now, these are, as I mentioned at the beginning, independent assets. So I can now move the blueprint and the spheres do not follow along. So in the next video, we're going to take a look at how to do this using instant static meshes in the construction script, which will alleviate the necessity for cleaning up our mess on the, on the sphere front. And it's got a lot of other really, really nice things. So stick around for that.